All right, it's now uh, five past 10. Uh, we are uh, 56 uh, attendees, I think we can start. So, um, uh, welcome again to this uh, to this webinar. Um, some uh, some um, uh, detail before we start. So this webinar is in listen mode only. Uh, so don't worry about um, your sound or your microphone or your webcam. Uh, but if you want, you can interact with us. Uh, in the left panel, uh, you can see a small Q and A. Um, box with an uh, interrogation mark, and you can use this um, this feature to um, to type questions during the the webinar. And uh, at the end, um, Dr. Dietzel and I uh, will take time to answer all your questions. I will uh, I will talk about all the questions related to the uh, to the software. Uh, however, I am not an expert in uh, in PSF. I don't have uh, first-hand experience uh, um, about doing uh, PSF every day in a core imaging facility. Uh, so that is why I ask uh, Dr. Dietzel uh, to join me and answer your uh, technical question about uh, PSF and about doing PSF on a regular basis for quality control. Uh, I would like also to say that uh, Dr. Diesel is not here to endorse our software, uh, but to share his uh, experience with uh, with PSF and its and his opinion uh, and advices about uh, PSF as a quality control tool. Uh, please stay uh, as long as you can with us. Uh, however, if you have to to leave early, this entire webinar is being recorded so we will send you the the link uh, after the after the broadcast so you can catch up on the on the parts that you might have missed this webinar will last for uh, 30 minutes uh, i will try i will try to aim for very short 15 minute presentation parts uh, to have at least 15 minutes for the q a session uh, that you are that will be taping uh, typing sorry uh, during the uh, during the presentation. So, without more uh, without more uh, talk, today's topic is how to analyze and track uh, PSF with Daybook. And the first thing I would like to say is that this webinar will not be about uh, preparing beads, uh, choosing the right beads, or acquiring beads. Uh, if you want to read some uh, resources about that, you can go to our blog on argolai.com slash blog. Uh, we just recently published a paper uh, about um, how to do uh, PSF um, according to ISO. And inside that article, you have some resources uh, from the, the French Metrology Network about how to actually mount and acquire bids uh, to do proper PSF. So um, the subject we have today is how to analyze and track uh, PSF with Daybook. For those of you who don't know, uh, Daybook 3 is a software that is a free uh, download from our website. You have the link uh, right here. And it's a troubleshooting and quality control software for fluorescence microscopes. Uh, it's the third version we've been uh, developing this software for the past uh, five years now, and um, and it's a tool that is really designed to uh, perform troubleshooting and quality control for fluorescence microscopes, and it's really aimed at that uh, at that usage, and that's why we made some decision regarding uh, how we process, store, and uh, display the results. Uh, in our software. So let's let's start the, the software and see the, the new PSF feature. So when you start uh, Daybook 3, uh, you see this window because the software is divided in two parts. The first one is the analyzing part uh, where you process all your images. And the second part is the data manager part 
it is where you uh, display and see the records uh, of your past uh, acquisition and this is where you will see the trends and the evolution of your quality uh, across time. Uh, the main part of the PSF analysis, of course, is done in the analysis module. So um, I will, sorry, I already launched that. So uh, I will launch that. So when you launch Daybook Analysis, uh, you uh, arrive in this interface. And uh, actually, I will restart so you can see the whole uh, process. So if I launch uh, Analysis, I will first be greeted by a window that asks me to select the type of product I will be using. So of course, here you have the list of all the Hargolite hardware products uh from the hm lm sim etc and because today we're going to do psf i'm going to select point like objects and here i'm in the uh playbook analysis uh, interface next step is click on analysis and here you have two parts in the interface the left the, the left one is the uh, library of files and the uh, right one will be the preview of the image and the settings here. So for uh, today's webinar, um, I was lucky enough that some of you sent uh, the uh, PSF data. So we're gonna use uh, three uh, ZStack from uh, Guillermo Marquez from the University of Minnesota. Uh, one from Joachim, uh, from Joachim, um, uh, from Joachim Hell, uh, sorry, from the uh, ETH of Zurich in Switzerland, and the last one from uh, Sam Dewey uh, from the Asselt University in uh, in Belgium. So as you can see, we are using here uh, Nikon uh, proprietary file, some Leica file, and some Zeiss file. But I can just uh, load those uh, three proprietary files in the software. Of course, because this is PSF, those three files will be uh, this stack, and they will be displayed in the uh, library parts of the software on the left. Okay, here I have, so I loaded the three files. So you can see they are here. Uh, because they are this stack, I can see the whole uh, uh, the whole uh, contents uh, of the of this stack with all the different uh, layers. And uh, Daybook analysis always works in the same way. The step is from left to right. So first you click on analysis, then you select your image, then you go to the uh, you select your uh, the, the analysis you want to perform. Uh, in that case, for the for the point-like object, uh, we only have one one analysis, which is the point spread function. Maybe in the future we will add uh, other. And then here you have all the all the settings uh, for the for the PSF. So let's start um, uh, not with the, uh, the 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 bits from uh, from Sam. But the one from Joachim. So as you can see here, I have the ZIT stack. This one from the um, STED system from uh, Leica with a 100 nanometer uh, bead that was acquired uh, uh, from uh, uh, Dr. Hell uh, a while ago. I think it was in uh, 2009 uh, in, uh, on 18. Uh, sorry. So when I click on this, I can actually have a preview. I have to normalize the image to actually see some uh, some elements. Um, I guess at some point I will reach the parts where I can actually see something. Yes, you can see here. I start to see something. Um, and try. Let me guess to see something. Of course, of course, I'm not saying it. I should see something around these points. Mm hmm. Anyway, it's not important because we are, of course, working with the Z stack, and the software will choose the best uh, Z position. 
So as soon as I have my bead selected, I go to the uh, settings uh, for the uh, point spread analysis. So the important settings are the lateral pixel size, of course, and the actual pixel size. Both values are by default extracted from the metadata of the image. If the metadata uh, is wrong, or if you want to, uh, if you don't have the metadata in the image, you can input the uh, the, the exact value uh, in Micron of both those elements. The next step is to select a fitting function. You have three choices, a single Gaussian, a single Lorenzian, or a single uh, sex square. Uh, I'm going to use Gaussian to go along with the ISO norm, but you can select any of those three uh, points. The other uh, settings are, are here to deal with uh, bad quality um, data. So you can increase the region of interest um, uh, to get more signal, uh, but the best to, is to, uh, to keep it at one pixel. And then you can uh, also remove the, you have some background correction. You can also re remove some hot pixel if you have some uh, defects in your, in your image that you want to um, take out. And then you can uh, correct the angle of your image if you have a, a tilt uh, in, your, in your stages. So in that case, I don't, know, don't have anything to do uh, because by default, it's configured in the most common way. So I have the right value here. I have my best focused selection, which is uh, clicked. Single Gaussian, one pixel, no background correction, no, pix no hot pixel removal, no orientation correction. I can click on start the analysis. So the last part is actually uh, cropping. So in that case, in that image, the bead uh, has already been chosen and cropped. But as you can see, as we will see later with the beads from uh, Sam Dewey, you can also select also one bead from a field of, of beads. So here I have nothing to crop. I just click on, just directly click on run. Uh, so by the way, I'm uh, doing that on a laptop, so the processing power is quite low. But you can see the result is, uh, is quite fast. So this is the result window from our point spread function uh, test. On the left here, you have the three uh, views from the, the PSF, XY, YZ, and XD. So those three views are interactive, so you can, of course, zoom in to see the, the shape um, of the bead. And these zoom are independent. You can also move on different parts. Then you have the line profiles. So you can see we have the point here in gray and in red, we have the fitted uh, profile. And you can see that we have some, uh, uh, some uh, not perfect fitting here, but overall it's, it's quite good. Then, of course, uh, you have the results, uh, the reason why you are doing the, uh, uh, the, the PSF analysis uh, is the uh, metrics. So you have the, the PSF test performs um, a series of measurements and then, you, and then display the results of the measurement of the full width at half maximum of your uh, fitting uh, or your fitted profile. And you can see here that for this bead, we have a 260, uh, 265 nanometer X, 271 in Y, and uh, about uh, 876 in Z. This is quite standard for uh, PSF measurements, but we wanted to go a little bit further and add additional information that we think are very important, which is the signal to noise ratio. In that case, uh, here, the signal-to-noise ratio, there is many ways to do that, but we choose to use the, um, the, uh, the signal-to-noise ratio as the uh, opposite of the uh, RMSE of the uh, fitted profile. And then you have the signal-to-background ratio, 
and uh, it's a quite a classic it's the ratio between the intensity maximum and the offset value in my image so these two elements describe the overall quality of your uh, of your image and then the last one is very important because it's the r square of the fitting function so it expresses how confident we are in the value you have here because of course those value uh, are not extremely useful uh, if your fitting is bad. So you want to have very good S square, otherwise you're trying to fit, uh, you are getting a value from a fit which is not good. Uh, we have a lot of additional uh, information. So you have here a secondary metrics. Uh, you have all the algorithms metadata, so you can see what software, uh, what are the settings you choose, the interpolation factor, all the information that you can, that you need to uh, assess the quality of the algorithm. And then you also have the uh, image uh, metadata that we use to process the, the results. So let's go and do another bid. This time I'm going to use the bid from uh, Sam Dewey. I can go directly to the result. And you can see that now I, what I have is a field of bid, so I want to uh, extract one bit from the from the whole field of view, so I can just uh, I can go. So I'm going to select you know, this one. So I'm just going here. I'm going to crop, and I'm going to run the uh, the PSF. Okay, and oops, sorry for that. And here. I've got my uh, my PSF and then quite fast, same information, all the views. I can I can have a look at the the shape and symmet the, the the symmetry, uh, the shape of my of my beat. And here again I have the fitting profile and the values. So at this point of my uh, of my test, uh, none of these results are actually uh, saved. So this is just uh, a test and you get the results and you can go back and perform another bid analysis all of that is live and there is no saving involved so now if you want to save those results and to and to archive the result of your psf you have uh, three uh, options uh, the first one is to generate a pdf report so you can select what you have in the in the report. You can have the images, the value. I will put everything. And these PDF reports. Oh yeah, okay. Sorry for that. I choose the wrong, uh, the the wrong background. Okay, let's go for analyzing type. Let's go for that. And of course, this is the demonstration every time you do something like that there is an issue with the pdf editing parts uh, it's not important i can show you that with another bit later so the second way to export the results is actually to use the csv and the uh, the csv uh, is a way to save the values of the tests in the easy to reprocess uh, format so here you have a, a CSV file, so you can open that with a, a TXT or with a, any uh, software. And you can have all the value, so you have all the profiles, all the, all the, all the, the point in the, uh, in the line profile, or the intensity. So here you have all the raw information that if you want to reprocess or let's say make your own, uh, make your own graph to, let's say, I don't know, like to put in a paper, you can actually redraw the, um, uh, the, the graph with your favorite uh, software. And the last but not least uh, function is to save that result in our tracking software, which is the data manager part of Daybook. And this is designed because um, what we gathered from expert is that the value you get here is one thing. Of course, you want those values to be uh, good enough for your applications. 
but you what you want to have a look at is the stability of those values because the stability of those values uh, are a good indicator of the stability of your system. As one of the experts uh, pointed out, uh, the PSF is a good catch many. It's not a catch all, so you will not see all the uh, issues of your system, but you will be able to detect many issues um, in your system based on the fluctuation of your PSF. So it's a good thing to actually track the value uh, uh, through time. And you do that with our data manager part. So if I click on save on data manager, I, am, uh, I, am, I have a window to save the result in the database. I will select uh, which system, uh, in which system I want to save those results. So I will use the, the cell Voyager. Uh, it's not the right system, but it doesn't, doesn't mind. I choose the profile, the channel, and I'm going to choose a saving date. I'm going to use the uh, uh, present date for the first save. And I click on Save Result. And now my result, result, uh, my result has been saved. So now let's go to the second part. So this is the Daybook Data Manager part. Daybook Data Manager is the uh, tracking part of uh, Daybook 3. So Every time you make an analysis with our software, the PSF, but also homogeneity, uh, resolution, intensity response, uh, stage drift during this stacking, you can save those results in our data database. And Daybook Data Manager is used to actually see the uh, evolution of those values across time. So as you can see right now, I am on the Cell Voyager DAPI channel of uh, of this uh, configuration. You can see I have all the tests I've made in the past. So field uniformity, field distortion. I'm going to, and there is no PSF because I have to refresh the data. So now that the that, that data has been refreshed, you can see I have a new, uh, I have a new part here, which is the point spread function. And here I have the, the point I just saved. So uh, our tracking are always made in the same way. Here you have what, what we call the timeline. So the timeline is the color coded uh, timeline of your results. What you do is actually you select uh, what metric you want to track. You define a threshold. And then uh, the, uh, this line here will turn from green to yellow, from yellow to red, uh, depending on the value. It's a quick way to see if your value uh, is out of your um, out of the, the out of your um, th uh, out of the threshold uh, you defined. So this is the the upper part, and in the lower parts, you actually see the same result we had in the uh, daybook analysis. So you have the information about saving dates, where the, image, where the images were taken. You have all the same primary, secondary image metadata, and you have the, uh, the, uh, the results I just showed you. And then just below, you have the uh, tracking of the evolution of the full width. Uh, so you have here yeah, along x, y, and then you have the signal to noise ratio, all these informations. Uh, what is important is that all these values are actually modular. So, okay, let's say I, I don't want to see the signal to noise ratio. I can just uh, delete this value. And I'm, uh, actually, I don't care about the signal to noise ratio. So, I'm deleting that. But I am really into the signal to background ratio. So, I will just and go with the, and I'm going to use the uh, signal to background ratio for X. And now I have my, my value here. Of course, I've, of course, I only have one point, so it's not really in interesting. But now if I go back to my analysis, I'm going to select another beat, the one from Guillermo Marquez. Same, start analysis, run the, the analysis. 
I have my results, by the way, very asymmetric. And I save that. And uh, I'm going to say that these results actually were uh, acquired uh, last week. So I'm going to go back in time and say, OK, it was, it was made last week. And I saved the results. So now when I go back to my, um, to my configuration here, if I refresh the data, what I have will be two points, the one from last week and the one from today. You can see now I have two points. And of course, this color depends on the value of each of the points. And now here, I can actually move from one date to the other. So on the first date, so last week, I have this information. I have my profile, and then I can switch to the next one. And you can see that, of course, if I do that every week or every month, I will be able to actually quickly move from date to date. And I see all the results, and I can have a very nice bird eye view on the quality of my uh, point spread function. And of course, now that I have two points, I start to see some uh, graph appearing. And of course, when I will have 5, 10, 20 points, I will see my, the trends of my PSF uh, across time. So I spoke very fast because I really wanted to be, to be quite short in time. But this is the overall, um, overall key points of the PSF test in Daybook. Uh, the idea was to make a very easy software to process the results and see some results, and then separate that uh, results from the act of saving it. So you can do and redo PSF, selecting different bits. And then when you are ready, you can actually save the, the results uh, as a CSV, um, as, a, um, uh, as a PDF. I'm going to retry that again. Well, of course, it's not working. And uh, all those uh, elements can be also saved in the tracking software. And because we really believe that tracking the quality is more important than the pure uh, value, we also make it very simple to actually uh, check the evolution of the value and see the trends uh, in your PSF. And of course, if you are having other hardware products, you can also see the evolution of your uh, field uh, uniformity. And you can see the evolution of your distortion and all the tests you can do with other uh, Argolite products. So I hope uh, I hope I was. Uh, clear. Uh, I'm sorry if I spoke too fast, but now let's go to your uh, Q&A and see if we can answer uh, all those uh, questions.